Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I would like to talk about specific methodology to take derivative in some not exactly straightforward cases. Um, this lecture is um, part of the course of Advanced Mathematics for Teenagers. It's presented on unizor.com. I recommend you to watch this lecture from this particular website because it has very nice notes like your textbook and it has certain functionality for instance you you can sign on and take exams any number of times you want site is free by the way so what are we talking today is about so-called implicit differentiation now implicit differentiation again it's nothing like special it, it's just an application of known things we, we have already uh, started them the differentiation of uh, compound functions, the chain rule. So let me just remind you the chain rule. If, for instance, you have um, a compound function f of g of x and you would like to take uh, its derivative, I will use this notation as a derivative, okay? So, what you do is let y be g of x. So first you differentiate f of y by y and multiply it by differentiation of g of x and then you basically substitute y is equal to g of x. So let me just give you an example. If you have something like, uh, for instance, um, y is equal to 2 to the power of sine x, something like this. So first, um, let's not use y here, let's put it f of x. You can actually say that this is y is equal to sine x and f of y is equal to 2 to the power of y, right? That's the same thing. So to differentiate that, you first differentiate this. Now 2 to the power of y would be 2 to the power of y by natural logarithm 2. And then you multiply it by derivative of this inner function. And now you can go back 2 to the power of y, put y back in place, so it's 2 to the power of sine x times logarith logarith natural logarithm 2 times cosine x. So that's your derivative. Now, this is basically the known uh, chain rule for differentiation of compound functions. What I would like to say is that well, it works basically when you have explicit um, dependency between argument and the function, like 2 to the power of sine, sine of x. What if you don't? What if your function, so let's say you have function y is equal to some kind of a function of x, but it's not given explicitly like a formula. It's given, for instance, like this which is basically an equation of the uh, circle. So there is no y equals some formula of x. You have this. Well, in this particular case, it's actually easy to um, resolve this for y. It's plus minus square root of r square minus x square. Basically, if you have your circle, now this part is plus and this part is minus two different functions basically combined together into one graph. So if you want to know what is the tangent of the tangential line uh, at point x, y, for instance, okay, so you can actually have the um, derivative of this function. So let's do it. Um, d uh, by x uh, of y is equal to this is the square root. Let's just talk about plus, the upper part. 
So it will be 1 over 2 square root of r square minus x square, right? That's the square root as a outer function. And then inner function is r square minus x square, and its um, derivative is, now this is the constant, so it's minus 2 times x, right? So we reduce it by 2, so it's minus x divided by square root r square minus x square. So that's the derivative. Now, in this case, as I was saying, you can resolve it. But let's approach it slightly differently, and it seems to me easier. Let's just differentiate the, so the whole thing from here, without getting into these formulas, re re resolution for y. Now, well, how can we differentiate this? Well, on the right I have a constant, so on the right I have zero, right? Now, on the left I have sum of two functions, function x squared, it's 2x, the derivative, right? derivative of y square again it's a compounded function the outer function is square which is 2y and inner function is y so it's y uh, derivative from which we can derive as minus uh, 2 and 2 will go x divided by y right now, in theory, it's exactly the same as this one, right? Because y is square root of r, r, r square minus x square. But we kind of derive this m much easier. And if you have x and y coordinates on the circle, this gives you kind of an easier and direct answer of what is exactly the derivative. Now, this is basically an example of implicit differentiation. So without resolving for y is equal to some kind of a formula of x and directly differentiating it, we do this type of um, differentiation of both sides, thinking about y squared as a compounded function. Okay? All right. Now, this works both ways, as we were saying. We can resolve for y and we can do it implicitly. Now, there are some cases which are not so simple to resolve. For instance, if you have x squared plus y squared is not a constant, but something like a sine x, what then? Well, actually, in my case, it's even more complicated. It's sine y. Right. If it's x, it can be resolved. If it's y, it's not resolvable for y, right? So, what can we do here? Well, let's do exactly the same thing. Let's differentiate, and this and this will be compounded function, where inner function is y in here and here, and outer function is square here and sine there. So, whenever we go, we go to a derivative, we will have this. Now, derivative of a sum is sum of derivatives, so it's derivative of x squared, which is 2x, plus derivative of y squared, which is 2y, times derivative of inner function y, right? Same thing here. First, we do cosine y, that's a derivative of outer function by, by y, and times derivative of inner function by x from which we can derive dx of y is equal to uh, 2x on the left. On the right, I will have cosine y minus 2y. All right, so that's an expression. I cannot use this to go into the dependency of x because I cannot resolve this um, for, for y. So it remains as it is. But again, how can you use it? Very simply. If this represents some kind of a graph, and you would like to know the derivative at some point on that particular graph. So what you do is you um, establish your x-coordinate, and then use some kind of a numerical methodology, computers, whatever else, to resolve this for y 
not as a formula, but as some kind of an approximate value. So you have x and you have y, and you substitute it here and you get the tangent. So that's just an example where you cannot really have this explicit formula even if you try. So it's still a useful method, this implicit differentiation. Now, let me give you an example when this uh, method is really used uh, to simplify something which uh, we actually did, but much more difficult, di uh, difficult way. Um, remember, when we were talking about the definition of derivatives, we basically had it defined as a limit of increment of function divided by increment of argument, where increment of argument goes to zero. Remember this, right? Now, using this straight methodology, we found out that if you want a derivative of this function, it's 1 over x. We really did it like logarithm of x plus delta x uh, minus logarithm x divided by delta x and had a limit using certain properties of the limits, etc., etc., and we derived this formula. Let me explain you how it can be done easier if you already know about uh, exponential functions. So, let's just think about what is the function like this. What is the definition of the logarithm? Well, if you remember, logarithm is, uh, in this case, a na natural logarithm. The base is e. So, it's such a number y, which if used as an exponent for e, it should equal to x. So, this is basically, this is definition of that. So, instead of differentiating this using limits, etc., etc., let's use this implicit definition of function y and use this implicit differentiation methodology, which means we'll just differentiate this and use this as a compound function and use the chain rule. So, the derivative of this should be, der should be equal to uh, that's y. should be equal to derivative of this, right? Now, what is derivative of this? So, first it's exponential function e to some kind of a power, and we know that e to the power of something being uh, differentiated gives you exactly e to the power of that something. Now we have to multiply it by inner differentiation. And that is the derivative of the left part. Derivative of the right part is 1, right? Derivative of function x. Now, what is e to the power of y? That's the definition, basically, of uh, logarithm, right? So, that, so, e to the power of y is equal to x. So, x times dx of y is equal to 1. dx of y is equal to 1 over x where y is logarithm x. So we got exactly the same thing, but without resorting to all these complicated uh, things about limits. Very easy, right? So that's kind of a power of this approach if used properly and, and at the appropriate time. And let me just give you another example where it seems to be the only way, actually, limits will not help. Like in this case, for instance, when I was talking about x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, we can directly resolve it for y and then take a derivative. Uh, in case of uh, logarithm x, we can actually use some limits and properties uh, of the limits and then derive uh, with the same formula. But let me just give you another example where I have no idea how to do it uh, without using this uh, uh, implicit differentiation. Here is the formula for y. Well, it's explicit defined, explicitly defined function, but I have no idea how to differentiate it directly. So what I will do is, first, let me just 
logarithm this. But let's just assume that everything is positive. So at least for, uh, for, for certain, for certain x, uh, certain positive x, uh, where everything makes actually sense, um, that I, I'm not really worrying about the domain of the function, etc. Let's just skip it for a while. Uh, so what I, what I will do is, I will do logarithm y is equal to sine x times logarithm x, right? I took logarithm of both sides, and since I have this exponent, then the logarithm goes like this. Remember this property, right? That's what I was using where a is sine. Okay, so we know that. Now that is easy. Now let me differentiate this, because I know how to differentiate it. First of all, the differentiation of logarithm y gives me what? First of all, outer function is logarithm, inner function is y. So uh, uh, de derivative of logarithm is 1 over y, right? And I have to multiply it by derivative of the y. So let me use prime number as a derivative. It's easier. What do I have on the right? On the right, I have a product of two functions. So the um, derivative of the product is uh, first function times derivative of the second plus derivative of the first times second from which I can derive y star, uh, y prime, the derivative of y, and it's equal to y times this. And I know what y is, so it's x sine x, and here I have sine x uh, divided by x plus cosine x times logarithm x. So that's the formula, and I hardly could derive this formula without this simple technique. All right? Okay, that's it for today. Uh, try to read the notes for this lecture. It's very useful. Um, and uh, uh, I do encourage you to uh, sign on to the website, to unizor.com, and take exams as much as you possible can. All right, thank you very much, and good luck.